A four-month-old baby taken from his father who is seeking political asylum. He is the youngest known child to be separated from his family at the U.S.-Mexico border. A New York Times investigation was able to track down Konstantin Mutu, who spent five months after being separated from his father in a foster home before finally reuniting with his family. That separation took place months before the Trump administration publicly launched its zero-tolerance policy. Joining us now is the reporter behind this investigation, Caitlin Dickerson, New York Times national immigration reporter and a CNN contributor. Um, I mean, just more remarkable reporting from you, Caitlin, but it, it, all, it, is, it is heartbreaking and maddening all at once. The fact that a four-month-old child was taken and then everything that ensued, and you had a really difficult time tracking him down. That's right, because all of the individual cases of family separations were all sealed under federal court order, which made it really difficult, even after I found mention of a four-month-old baby in court records, to find him, because no one was allowed to talk about who he was or where he was. Eventually, I made enough phone calls to enough lawyers and advocates and, and found out that the family was interested in speaking to us. And, and as you point out, you know, I think the idea of taking a four-month-old child away um, even the logistics of it are really sort of striking and compelling. What does that actually look like? Um, right. You know, contract workers in this case taking a four month old baby from Texas and delivering him to Michigan to live with a foster family for five months. And it's just, you mentioned that the logistics of it, there, I mean, there's a practical reality too. If you look at a four month old baby and everything that a baby needs at that stage of life, right. where they're at in feedings, diaper changings, the impact this has on their development, obviously. The other thing I think that's fascinating for folks is we talk so much about immigration. There seems to be, in many cases, a sense that we are always talking about, or for the most part, people fleeing Central America. Mm -hmm. This is a family that was seeking political asylum fleeing Romania. That's right. The vast majority of people who were affected by family separation and who are coming to the United States now are from Central America. But in many ways, the Mutus sort of fit the profile of a traditional asylum seeker. They're Roma. They're part of a persecuted ethnic minority and part of a group that for years has, has heard and thought that if they came to the United States, they might be able to escape the sort of persecution and racism that they face in their home country. And so they decided to take a risk and to come here. Um, their story, too, where where this entire journey has led them since they decided to seek asylum. The parents are not doing well at all. In fact, Constantine's mother saying, I felt numb knowing that someone was raising my kid. As a mother, I'd rather die than have someone else raise my kid. She's dealing with issues. The father who was seeking asylum, uh, who ultimately was separated from Constantine, this, this child is, who's now, what, about 18 months old? Yes, uh, 20 months old. And he went through two separations, if you think about it. So Constantine was breastfeeding when he was taken away from his parents and, and went through that sort of trauma. You know, he had stomach issues. He had various health issues acclimating to this new life in Michigan with surrounded by completely new you know, clothing, food, um, and people. And then he was with that family for five months and went through yet a second separation, which in some ways you know, was more traumatic because he was older at that point and had become attached to that second family. His mother, as you mentioned, she was hospitalized multiple times while he was away for severe hypertension brought on by stress. His dad also has flashbacks and nightmares and, and is dealing with severe psychological issues. And Constantine still can't walk or talk, and he's almost two. You also get into, you know, sort of the legal realities here that, um, you know, his attorney went in, his, his pro bono attorney, I believe, went in and was saying to the judge, you know, we need to get this child back with his family. And and in fact, the, the attorney for the government, as I understand it, said, well, you know, he needs to get himself back there. This is a, this is a baby. They made a sort of logistical argument against uh, voluntary departure is what it's called, right. which in the case of a child means, yes, the government should pay for the ticket home. And yeah, the judge sort of got upset in that moment and said, so you really think that this baby should have to make his own way back to Romania? And what was also interesting about the government's position in his case was that the judge noted it was contrary to the same position that the government lawyers had been making in that same courtroom for two years prior. So something shifted. And again, this is right at the sort of height of, of fury over family separation last summer when government lawyers decided, no, we're going to try to stop him from going home or at least stop from paying for it. Right. It's amazing. And it's amazing how much we still don't no, I know you say part of that is faulty data, perhaps not intentional, but just in terms of the record keeping and what you have access to. One other thing that really stood out to me in your story is the impact that this also had on the social worker. She's very young. She's in her early 20s. And she it was after Constantine, I believe, that she just said, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit more. What, what did she tell you specifically 
what in her, what was it that just made her throw her hands up? <clears throat> Excuse me, well, you're, you're right, Alma, Acevedo, she was 24 years old, right out of college, and had signed up to be a caseworker for young immigrant children, um, planning to work with kids who, who would come to the United States unaccompanied and knew they were going to be coming on their own, when all of a sudden, children who had been separated started showing up. They were younger, they were more traumatized than she was used to. And she had no answers for nearly a year as to how to deal with them. So just for example, in Constantine's case, he arrived with one piece of paper, a birth certificate, and that was it. It had his name and his parents' name, and it was up to this 24-year-old woman to try to track down his parents. So it was incredibly stressful for her. I mean, she basically said they did no work during those months. It was just trying to console ch kids constantly. And each time a new one arrived, it would sort of trigger all the other children, and, and they would all start crying again.